Hello friends, I'm back. But today I'm going to be doing something just a little bit different. Not really preparing a dish today, but showing you how to utilize a specific vegetable so that you can incorporate this vegetable into your, um, I guess, arsenal of veggies that you go to um, during certain parts of the year. But first, my name is Shay. I love to cook and I love food. So here on my channel, you will find me cooking different dishes, but specifically healthier dishes because I'm in the process of changing my lifestyle and how I prepare dishes for my family. So I would love for you to follow me along, um, follow along on this journey with me. If you can do so, please hit the subscribe button. Also, hit the bell so that you can be notified when my videos are uploaded. So, like I said, today we're not going to be preparing a dish, quote unquote, but I am going to be showing you how to cook butternut squash. And you ask yourself, why butternut squash? Well, it is in my opinion, um, a great, great veggie that most people would eat and love to eat, but they can't get over the fact of like, how do you prepare it? What do you do with it? And I'm here to solve that problem for you. I'm going to show you exactly how I utilize the vegetable um, in dishes that I cook. And hopefully this will help you be a little bit less intimidated the next time you see one in the grocery store. I have two butternut squash that we're gonna be using today, a larger one and a smaller one. And you'll need a couple or a few items in order to cook these. First, you want a good chef knife. Um, and then you also want a vegetable peeler, like a potato peeler and just a regular sheet pan. Um, so we're going to start by actually getting the skin off of the butternut squash. This can be achieved um, with this action that you see here. It's simply like, it's as simple, I should say, as peeling a potato, a um, much larger potato, but you do the same tactics here. You just want to take your time and go over um, the entire butternut squash, removing all of that taupey color. Sometimes I do like to go just a little bit further just to remove some of that white, but that is completely um, your decision whether or not you would like to do that. Now, once the pill has been taken off, you just discard that and then cut off the ends of the butternut squash. As you see, I have done so. Um, then just a regular spoon is all that's needed in order to go in and get those seeds out. Um, and those seeds are similar to just pumpkin seeds. So pretend as you are um, carving a pumpkin and getting those seeds out. Very simple, very easy. Now go in with your knife and just do long slits or cuts um, through the entire pumpkin squash from end to end. Not pumpkin squash, um, butternut squash. Sorry, guys. Uh, but yes, you just want to dice it into cubes. And here is a close-up of me doing the same thing. Um, I found this technique to be a little easier, going halfway through, turning, and then um, going the extra length of the butternut squash once you rotate that around. And you can go in and actually cut those pieces up as small as you would like. At this point, this is what you would be using to um, roast those. But I decided to freeze mine for a later date um, because I am planning on just roasting the entire butternut squash, which I'll show you how to do here um, and feed my family today. So the same technique, just cut it down the middle. You don't want to peel the outside this time. You want to leave that on to protect the bottom of the squash. Um, you want to go in same way and get those seeds out. So essentially the first part is the same. And that's what the inside of the butternut squash would look like once it is actually clean. Now I'm using coconut spray, but you can use any kind of oil that you have just to spray the top of that to keep it from actually um, burning and also losing too much moisture. I have also sprayed that um, that that sheet underneath it, that baking sheet, so that it does not stick. Now we're just going to go in and salt and pepper the top of this butternut squash before we put this in the oven. 
You want to roast that at 350 degrees. It's going to take about an hour and a half, give or take, depending on the size of the butternut squash, before it will be um, fork tender. And what I say about fork tender, tender is you will be able to put the fork all the way through the center of the butternut squash. Now I am just actually loosening up the butternut squash, taking it away from the side and adding some butter. Um, and that's essentially all you have to do in order to make um, roasted butternut squash. Or if you want to just bake the whole butternut squash and serve it as like um like mash style, I should say. This is completely optional. I'm going in with some coconut um, sugar and putting that on there just for a hint of sweetness. But that's really the gist of it. All right, so that's pretty much how you utilize butternut squash and cut it and cook it two different ways. A couple of things I do want to mention though. You want to make sure that you have a pretty sharp knife. Mine was a little dull, so... That's why a little bit more extra elbow work was needed in order to get down in there. A sharp knife would definitely be the best thing to use when you're about to cut into one of these bad boys. Just be careful that um, you're not slipping so you're not cutting yourself. And what you did not see was actually a wet paper towel underneath my board to keep it planted on my countertops without slipping. So utilize that tip and also uh, make sure your knife is sharp when you go to cut it. But otherwise, make sure you guys try this. Don't shy away from the butternut squash or acorn squash next time you are in the grocery store because the acorn squash, you pretty much can do the exact same thing with that minus the peeling. I would just roast the whole thing. Try it out. Let me know if your family liked it. Let me know if it was too hard or if you would like to see more videos of this nature on the channel. But, but, be, but before we leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button, you guys. And also follow me along on my Instagram channel. You can find me at Shay's Country Kitchen over on IG. But until next time, we'll see you again back here at Shay's Kitchen.